Please ask let's your just, questions, Zach. Let's just get into uh, <laughs> who we're joined by here. We've got Tony Fast from Fast Egg Montana. Tony, you want to tell your story a little bit about who you are and uh, what you do online? Okay. I okay. think I can All right. stumble through this. Okay. Um, farm in Northeast Montana and kind of took, uh, so like the social media side and YouTube kind of after seeing what Zach was doing, our farms are completely different. So kind of feel like there's different story to tell on every different farm. Yeah, absolutely. So you took the, you took the idea and implemented on your farm and now you talk about what goes on in Northeastern Montana yep. versus West Central Minnesota versus you, Western Texas. Do you feel like he's copywriting you? No. Oh. I feel like he's telling a story of agriculture that I can't tell every day. I think there's some fundamental, you know, similarities between the two of you because you say agriculture. Instead well, it's of a agriculture? Northern, it's a northern thing. Oh, I'm just pointing that out. We're close to Canada. So we're joined by Tara. <laughs> yes! <laughs> you don't want to tell your story oh, first? Hey, You're I'm not Jay. the host. You're not the host. I'm not the host. I'm sorry. All right, we're joined That's here right. by Tara Beaver Coronado. Yes. Quiet, Jay. Yeah. So I uh, have Instagram and YouTube, Beaver Vineyards. I uh, planted my first vineyard in 2018 and my family and friends kind of wanted to follow my journey. So I started putting on social media and it kind of grown from there. Which is a fascinating story because I know nothing about vineyards. Yeah. So we got to talking about it a little bit the other night. And I don't really know anything crazy. either, actually. You don't? No. <laughs> but, but what you do know is grapes will grow in California. They will so grow. So you're going to figure it out. That's right. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I, I just tried to learn as much as I could for about a year and a half, and then I went for it. Yeah, so, you did some research, figured yeah. it out, and now you're learning as you go. Yeah. As opposed to Jay, who will just throw anything in the ground. Yeah. That's right. Why not? I mean, we're farmers here, right? <laughs> yeah. Jay? What's your story? Yeah, so uh, I'm what I consider a generation and a half farmer. I'm from southern New Mexico, but now live in West Texas. And we farm in West Texas and, and New Mexico. And uh, we're a diversified farm. We do anything from lettuce and cabbage to pecans, cotton, a little bit of wine grapes, uh, a lot of alfalfa. Yeah, do you ever call them pecans? No, 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 that's if you had to go to the bathroom and there's a soda can over there, that's you pee in a can. Got it. Yeah. Okay, so they're pecans. <laughs> they're pecans. What are you, they're pecans. I've never really known what to call them. They're delicious, though. They yeah, are delicious. Them delicious. Amazing. That's what you call mm -hmm. them. Eat more nuts. <laughs> we'll move on from that. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> that didn't work out the way I was expecting. Quiet, Jay. It. Sorry. <laughs> Tony, why did you start on social media, and where do you think it goes from here? I just think there's our side of the story that we need to tell that the media is trying to tell for us, and it's who better than our own selves to share what we're doing. It's got to come from somewhere, so why yep. not from the guy who's working in the dirt, or the girl, Yes. who's working in the right, dirt. Right, Riveter, Rosie. <laughs> Rosie the Riveter, but it's okay. Sorry, whatever. <laughs> Jay, why, yeah. why, why did you start on social media? I, I really didn't know, so I didn't grow up in, in farming, I didn't grow up in agriculture in, in a commercial sense, um, and so what I wanted to do is I just wanted to, one, document kind of my journey into agriculture, but two, I think that the important thing was is there were so many misconceptions about what we do every day uh, that I wanted to try to start a lot like what Tony said. I wanted to start painting a picture uh, that was real, that was genuine, that, that, that truly comes from, from my mouth to the consumer's ears. Yeah, something yeah. that comes from an actual farming family that's yeah. actually out there working. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and I think people appreciate that so much, like farmers and non-farmers, because I had someone come up to me earlier that said, you know, he's a farmer, he's here, and he said he liked watching us all because he feels like he's not very, you know, he's not out on social media too much, but he appreciates us sharing our story so the non-farming community kind of sees what it's really like. And that's cool to hear that farmers like it too, because sometimes I'm like, oh, am I saying the right things? You know, I'm not sure, but farmers appreciate appreciate us sharing our story out there too. Yeah, I think so in general. The really cool thing about the four of us sitting here is that none of us have similar farms. Mm -mm. No. We're from completely different regions. Well, like our shirts set up too. Red, green. <laughs> I'm, I'm colorblind. Just, I'm upset that I don't have a, a, a black one like this. I mean, the I green, mean, that the green flannel's pretty cool. Sweet. I'll I mean, introduce I do you to some this. people at Farmers Business Network who can probably, <laughs> when you get to our level, then you get this cut kind of thing. <laughs> I don't know where to go with that. <laughs> Sorry. No, but back to the, the diversity of it. We've got a California vineyard farmer. Is that what you would call it? Yeah, I a say vin wine vineyard, grower. A winist? No, because I don't make wine. A, 
grapist. A wine grape grower. <laughs> just go like with it, Zach. Just go that. with it. They're cereal grapist? <laughs> <laughs> no, they're just grapes. grapes. They're not in cereal at all. Oh, that's what Tony does. <laughs> <laughs> and then of. we've got Jay, who is from dang near Mexico. Yeah. And Tony from pretty much Canada. He yeah. picked us up at the airport and he's like, see that? That's Mexico, like across that fence. Right there, yeah. It's right there. And completely different farming from what you do. Slightly. Slightly. They yes. like just tear dirt up for the heck of it, I think. You guys no. do? We <laughs> tear dirt up for the heck of it. Yeah, we farm in a really weird climate too because we've got a, we farm in one valley that's, that's fed by the Rio Grande River, uh, which is kind of like our, our Nile, mm -hmm. where we can grow a, a fast, diverse, group of crops uh, and then our big farm in, in Texas is, is kind of like farming on Mars and so we've got some some tough soil some tough water um, and it's really made us as a as a farm push to make sure that we are utilizing natural resources to the best of our abilities and, and I know that sounds cliche and people are like well farmers are always saying that they're feeding the world and they're trying to save the environment and whatever at the same time us putting in some some approaches and some technologies to the farm it's actually proven we put in a monitoring system in, in um, in our center pivots. And just by putting in that $50,000 investment, we're saving 1.2 million gallons of water a day. A just day? A day. Just being able to monitor where our water's going and how it's applied to the soil. Mm -hmm. And so it's those things that, you know, I think is it crucial for us in agriculture to do a good job of saying, look it, we're not using water out of an aquifer and just kind of throwing it on a crop that nobody cares about. Mm -hmm. What it is, is we're utilizing a natural resource to make sure that we're growing something, and I hate the word sustainability, but it's regenerative practice. It's, it's the fact that we're able to take something and work mm -hmm. that into something else that's gonna not only feed you, clothe you, uh, fuel you, but that's what we do. It's, it's, the, it's the process of always moving forward, continuing yes. as an industry, and being able to show that. Absolutely. That, that we're always using the latest technology, we're always trying to do better. And I think, I think in agriculture we have a, we, we, we kind of hit this down slump where we kind of sit here and talk about uh, oh my gosh, we're having to reinvest in this and the, it's so expensive to be in agriculture. It's, it's so expensive to all these input buys. And Which all it things. is. It is, it is. At the same time, I think the reason that you're seeing such a young gathering of agriculturalists here is because we have a progressive mindset that we are going to put things into place. Uh, yeah, it's gonna cost money. Yes, I, I don't think there's one of us here that's debt free. But at the same time, we nope. are going to make these purchases based on the fact that we're going to change agriculture for the better. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you said this earlier, it's about perception. Like we have to see it in the positive light. Like you said, we're doing this to make positive changes rather than, oh, I have to spend all this money to make these changes. You right. know, like if we put it in a positive light, we're making these, we're spending this money to make positive changes. Right. You here's, know? here's why we're doing this. Yeah. And I think Beeves does a great job of kind of bringing the, the stress into, into light and the fact that there's so many things that we have to be conscious of all the time you know, mental health and agriculture is something that, that's failing. And so with all of the stress that we have to be able to put all these inputs in, go into the debt that we're doing, trying to market our crops, fighting a trade war, doing all these kind of things, what does that mean to us, the farmer, and how does that affect our mental capacity to, to operate as a human being? Yeah. yeah. Which you've never really operated as a human being. Anyway. No, I've always, yeah, it's kind of weird. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. But I think that's what's great about social media. I mean, everyone it can relate to us. Even though we are so so different, they see we're all humans, we all stress, we've all got the same problems, and we're all moving forward, you know? So I think that's what's great about social media. We're all sharing our story, and people appreciate it. That, and that, that's the biggest thing is there, there's so many farm groups out there that are saying, you need to go and share your story. In all reality, what we need to do is we just need to, we need to share what we do. Mm -hmm. That story changes every day and like you know you think of a, a corn and soybean farmer like yourself you think about you know, for me I'm like how boring could that be but then when I look at the diversity and how you have to grow with weather conditions varieties markets those kind of things it's so intriguing I mean it's 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 amazing how there's so much diversity in one country and the fact that we have to make all of these different changes to be viable in in, in an industry yeah and you don't have yeah. to travel that far no. Like even close to your farm, it completely changes in miles. Yeah, to in just a few miles. Yeah, we have, right where we're at, you would never consider putting in an irrigator on most acres. I mean, we have too much water. Mm -hmm. But if you thank go- Thank God for Randy. Thank God for Randy. <laughs> if you go 10 miles northeast, we've got irrigators. Mm -hmm. And we've got completely different crops being planted there because spuds. of- Spuds. Spuds. We've got coarse textured soils and we've got irrigators completely different than where I'm at. You go in the opposite direction, you've got the Red River Valley. Mm. The heaviest, blackest, thickest dirt I've ever seen. Yep. I mean, I think if you could pick that up and put it in central Illinois, it would be 500 bushel corn. 
It's just amazing soils. Did those pivots like rust with all the rain this year? Did they like I, disappeared in the rain? I don't think so. No, I think they're still there. Okay, that's good. They might need those again some year. <laughs> they might. They might. Yeah. Uh, how has uh, social media changed who you are, and maybe how has it changed your life beyond online? I hope it hasn't changed me. I hope I'm still the same person. I think I'm still the same person, but it's. I don't really know how to answer that, but it def definitely is just, I think it's helped to show people, it's made me more like just confident and you know, being able to like, what we're gonna do later, I wouldn't have done two years ago. But because you're on social media, filming yourself and whatever, like you're showing all these people your life to begin with. So right. I think maybe that side of me has changed a little bit. but Opened like, up a bit? Yeah, but I think like who I still am, what I'm still doing, who I am is the same. Yeah, but what about you guys? Uh, well, I feel like it's changed my life a lot, mainly because I've gotten to meet so many people. I mean, you, all of you, and we have a large group over there, you know, that none of you I may have never met through without social media. Um, I kind of feel the same as Tony, you know, I don't think I've changed as a person. It's just, it's given me the ability to- Opportunities. Yeah, opportunities. opportunities. And, and they've been amazing. And I can connect with other farmers, even though we're so different, it still like feels the same, you know, so. You're sitting in beautiful, sunny Omaha right now. I know, of, gosh, I got out of California, came yep. over here, it's just lovely. It's wonderful. No, <laughs> so cold. I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say that it lit a fire under me. And social media has is, 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 is changed the way that I've, see agriculture. I'm Something having a hard time listening. Yes. <laughs> I'm right having a I was about time to get this deep, dark hole <laughs> over. No, no, I, I really do think that it has changed. Let me introduce you to my friend, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> the, fact, the fact that I'm, I, I'm willing to sacrifice all that I have to fight for an industry. And the fact that, that is, it has brought to life so many great people that I think are amazing. And, and this is a testament to who we are as agriculturalists and, and what I'm going to fight for. Yeah. Thank you guys for joining us. We're gonna throw some quick shout outs out there.